Hey guys, happy Saturday. This is MJ at His Truly, locating and educating prodigals at risk in these final hours, moments, nanoseconds prior to the rapture of the church, which we know is more imminent this very second. Thank you, Jesus. One day closer, one second closer to looking into our Savior's face. Who's ready to go home? I am so, so ready, guys. Um, hope you guys are having a fabulous day. Remember, despite what we're going through, Jesus Christ is still in the boat. He's never left the boat. The winds might get strong. Uh, the waves might get pretty high, but Jesus never leaves us nor forsakes us. I wanted to share a little bit out of my journal today um, and a little bit out of Behold, I Stand at the Door and Knock, my first book. And usually, you guys, for new subscribers, I welcome all new subscribers to the channel. Just so you know, I am not a pastor. I am not a teacher. Um, this channel is 100% pre-trib. Um, you can have other views. That is fine as, all, as long as we're on the same page that Jesus Christ is the only way to the Father. We must be born again to enter into the kingdom of heaven. And the blood of Jesus is the only sacrifice that the Father accepts. Okay, um, the Gospels, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that Jesus Christ died for our sins, according to Scripture, that he was buried, and on the third day rose again, according to Scripture. That is the simple gospel of our salvation. Once we are born again, we are eternally born again. God does not abort, abort his own children. Okay, that is imperative that we know that and understand that. And at heart value, know that God does not throw his children away. Do we walk away? Yes, we do. That's called a prodigal. And I was a prodigal for over 10 years. That's what this channel is all about. Pre-trib, like I said, you can be any view um, that you want to be, um, but I don't want to argue about it. Okay, I don't want to debate about it. You cannot sway me either way. I am 100% pre-trib. This channel is 100% pre-trib, and I don't like debates in the comment section about, um, no, it couldn't be pre-trib because... Scripture gets thrown in there and taken out of context. There are two. There is a second coming that is something that is completely different than the rapture. And people take the rapture scriptures and the second coming scriptures out of context and throw those things in the comment section. And it's like, please don't do that. You know, I mean, if you want to go to a um, post-trib, mid-trib channel, you know, feel free to do so because... Um, if that's what makes you more comfortable. But my subscribers and the people are on this channel, um, I will delete, you know, I will delete people who are divisive, divisive. One of the things that the Lord hates is division. And we don't need division right now, guys. Jesus said the way that the world would know that we are his disciples are by what? By his, by our love for one another, not division, not, um, you know, trying to, it's, it's disgusting. Some of the things I've seen in the comments, not only on my channel, but I, I look at a different, a couple other, other different channels and there's such division and coming from the body of Christ, guys, we're children of God. If we're saved and there's an unbeliever looking at those comments, why would they want to become a believer? We can't even get this straight ourselves. So just from the get-go, I want to say that we're all fellows in the sh same ship, okay? So we can fellowship. We don't have to have the same eschatological, eschatological views, eschatological views, okay? Um, but this channel is 100% pre-trip. Knowing that going forward, um, welcome to the channel. And know that if you are a new subscriber, I will be praying for you and yours and your prodigal going forward. Um, all of us have a prodigal. Um, most of us have a prodigal on this channel. Um, I have a prodigal. And all three of my children were raised in the church. Um, in a non-denominational church, all three are saved, baptized. Um, not that baptism is a salvation requirement. Um, but we pray for one another's prodigals, okay? And know that we walk by faith, not by sight. So our faith is in the God who we trust can do a miracle in a moment, in a nanosecond, guys. 
I am a miracle that my great grandmother prayed for, for many years. My testimony is the first video on um, this channel. And you know, I was looking at it yesterday. It's been two and a half years, guys. Unbelievable. Two and a half years where scared me comes on. The Lord told me to get on here and um, start sharing, you know, to the prodigals, his heart. And this is God's heart. I've written three books um, available on Amazon. I don't always, you know, I don't come on here to pitch that. I don't come on here to sell books. I come on here and I share from those books because that is the heart of God. Those three books are Behold, I Stand at the Door and Knock, which is what I'm going to be sharing from today. Um, Behold, Thine Enemy and My Poetic Justice. We do have an enemy. All right. I know there is a devil for his demons had me in chains, a prisoner of sin and torment that started out as an innocent game. My hands were tied behind me with handcuffs made of steel. This life was one big question mark. My nightmare was very real. I wanted to run just as fast as I could to where I did not know, hoping to escape hell's fire and find shelter away from this bow. Through my journey into darkness, I felt a hand reach out to me. He said that he was my savior and only his blood could set me free. He promised to protect me, keep me from all harm, clothe me with his righteousness and give my heart a song. He handed me the book of life and his words were very clear. This is my plan for all of mankind. You'll find your way in here. The only way to the father is through the son. Jesus said we must be born again. So before I share any of this, I want to share with you how to become born again, okay? For prodigals, they are born again, and they're out there in that wilderness, in that, you know, mixed up with the world and, and, and taking hits from the world and the enemy, and the church isn't even really looking for them. So this is the primary reason for this channel, along with to locate those who are not saved at all, those who are still in darkness. The Bible says the moment we are born again, we are transferred spiritually from the kingdom of darkness immediately into the kingdom of light. But also the Bible says my people perish for lack of knowledge. So there are a lot of us, like the scripture says that a man had a hundred sheep and the one sheep wandered away. Wouldn't that shepherd leave the 99 to go get the one? Well, this channel represents the one that wandered away. Because not all who wander are lost, friend. Because once we are saved, we are eternally saved. God does not abort his own children. So how do we get born again? Like I said, the gospel is simple. It's 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to scripture, that he was buried and on the third day rose again according to scripture and is coming back soon and very soon to get us in the rapture, to harpazo, rapture us. Um, do we want to escape this world? Yes. Um, that's the whole point. That's the whole end of the book is that we escape. We get out of here in a nanosecond, in the twinkling of an eye, we will be gone. The bride of Christ will be gone. And there will be uh, millions of people standing on the other side of their TV with jaws dropped open wide. I cannot believe that they were telling the truth. Don't be that one person standing on the other side of that TV. Um, come to Jesus Christ today. So how do you do that? A is to simply admit, yes, I am a sinner in need of a savior. B is to believe, and this is key, Believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and that God raised him from the dead. The Bible says that all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. See, call upon his name. For God so loved this world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into this world to condemn this world, but that through him we might all be saved, but not all of us will be saved. There is a liar. Satan came to steal, kill, and destroy. He's a murderer from the beginning. He whispers lies in our head. There is no God. 
there was a God, why would all this be going on? If there was a God, why did this happen in your life? We entered into a condition called sin. Remember that. We're conceived in a condition called sin. We must be born again because we're all born this way. You know, everybody says, yeah, they, I'm born this way. I was born this way. I can't do anything about it. You know, addicts say, I was born this way. It's a disease. Um, you know, homosexuals say, oh yeah, I was born this way. We're all born this way. It's a condition called sin that we are conceived into and that we have no power over. Only Jesus Christ can break the power of sin and darkness and give us eternal life and spare us from eternity in hell. Okay, so we simply become born again of Christ's righteousness. It's not even our own righteousness. We are not saved by our own works. We're saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Don't let anyone tell you differently. Not religion, not anything. I came from a Catholic background, and that's all I'm going to say right there. I went to a Catholic school. Okay, and that's all I'm going to say right there. Works don't get us anywhere. Now, are we saved for works? Yes, we are saved for works. The Bible says we are his poema. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works that God prepared before the foundations of this earth that we should walk in them. But you must know that we are not saved by those works ever. Works don't save us. Our religion doesn't save us. Buddha, Allah, Muhammad, the prayers of our ancestors, whoever, whatever, fill in your own blank. That doesn't get us saved. Jesus Christ is the only way to the Father. The only way to the Father is through the Son. When we stand before God, the only thing, the only reason that we are permitted access into heaven is because our sins are forgiven by Jesus Christ and he's our savior. So know that going forward that we are in the very final moments of the end of this dispensation called grace. What is that? That's a dispensation and the end of this dispensation is gonna, the trumpet's gonna sound, the dead in Christ are gonna rise first and we, this final generation I believe, with all my heart, who are alive and remain, will be caught up with them, harpazoed in those clouds, and ever so be with our Lord. And the Bible tells us to comfort one another with these words. Encourage one another as we see the day approaching. And guys, this day is approaching like a freight train. Everything that is, I mean, I cannot even really believe we're still here. Prophetically, everything is happening. The next, the very, very next thing on God's prophetic calendar is the rapture and people are out there just like the bible says as in the days of noah um marrying and you know uh buying and selling and uh all this genetic crispr casper stuff going on that's exactly what was happening in the days of noah exactly we have arrived we have arrived so don't be deceived the thing about de being deceived is that you don't know you're deceived. And that, that's the thing about deception. You don't know you're deceived. And so you believe what you're, what you're deceived in. So pray for wisdom. I pray for wisdom for everyone on this channel and every family member represented by everyone on this channel that God would give us the wisdom that we need. Because the Bible says, if any man lacks wisdom, let him come to me. We don't need the world's wisdom. We need spiritual wisdom from our Heavenly Father. So I want to share a little bit from my journal. Um, tomorrow is usually um, our journaling day. And I've gone through the ABCs of journaling already. We have already went through the alphabet. Um, last Sunday was the letter Z for Zion in this world is a zoo. But... Um, but what I think I'm going to do on Sundays now is just like journaling kind of classes. Like I said, I'm not a teacher. I am a nurse. I've been a nurse for 30 years. I've worked, um, you know, in addiction counseling and as a nurse in drug rehabs. 
and psych, you know, settings, um, you know, hospital settings and different. So journaling is something that I have always advocated for. Um, and journaling is something that Lord has used so tremendously in my life. And um, what I think I'm going to do is just like a topic every Sunday, like, you know, bitterness, um, joy, uh, fear, you know, just changing the topic. So if you guys have something that you want to talk about or something you want to journal about, um, just drop it in the comment section, you know, and I'll bring it up on that Sunday or, you know, um, put it on the list for the Sundays. So that's kind of what the Lord is, the Holy Spirit is leading me to do is just topics, you know, the fear, the bitterness, you know, unforgiveness, um, joy, um, just different topics. So that's what we'll be doing on Sundays tomorrow and going forth on Sundays for as long as we're here. I don't know how long we're going to be here guys, seriously. And I mean that so seriously. Um, no one knows when we're going, when that trumpet's going to sound, but I know it's soon. I know it's soon and very soon. So is your church even talking about Israel? What's going on right now? If it's not, there's a problem because there's a possibility they believe in replacement theology, that the church, um, that we as Christians replace Israel and we don't replace Israel. I mean, if God, God's promises to Israel weren't kept, what says his promise to us is going to be kept? God is faithful and he is not a man that he should lie. So there's a lot of churches that aren't, aren't even addressing the subject of prophecy in these final moments. Um, and for good reason, I guess, uh, that they don't understand Bible prophecy, that they're fearful that they might lose their congregation. Um, a third of the Bible is prophecy, guys. And um, prophecy already fulfilled, we see. And what's happening right now is the Bible being fulfilled right before our very eyes. This, what's happening right now, is in the Bible. So make sure that you're grounded in, in a church that um, knows that Israel and the church have two separate agendas, all right, on God's prophetic calendar. And um, having been in Israel last month, it was the most, they're the most absolutely wonderful people and, um, and gracious and pray for the peace of Jerusalem, pray for the peace of Israel. Um, having been there, and I know that we're going back in the thousand year millennial reign is mind blowing. It's just mind blowing because it's such a beautiful, beautiful, I can see why God has written his signature on that place. But make sure that your church is sharing that or that you are in a place where you're not being deceived, okay? Because we don't replace the church. So global anti-Semitism is off the charts, guys. In these temples in Miami Beach and New York, everywhere that we look in the United States, anti-Semitism, a hatred for the Jews is just escalating and... Um, you know, that's why we have to pray for the peace of, of the Jews and pray for the peace of Israel. And what's going on in the United States, um, God showed me, I don't know if it's been a couple of years now, this is two and a half years, this channel, this is two and a half years old. Can't believe we've been here this long. But um, since the Lord first told me, get on this YouTube, and I didn't even know how to turn a channel on for YouTube, but, um, and I started sharing from my books and just sharing from my heart, but um God showed me the United States flag burning in an open vision. And I've shared that on the channel. And he also showed me the chair where I saw the back of a man's head. And this was an open vision that I had on the same day that I had the vision of the flag burning. And I don't have a lot of open visions. So you new subscribers know I don't have a lot of open visions, but it is biblical. And I know it was the Lord. I do test the spirits. Um, God does give dreams and visions. So, but the other vision, um, open vision was of a chair and I saw the back of a man's head and the Lord said to me, nothing but the Holy Spirit. I knew in my spirit that that represented the Antichrist, that he's alive and sick and living. 
on this planet somewhere and that chair is about to turn and we won't be here when that chair turns. We are going to be raptured, guys. We'll be at the wedding. So while the world is preparing for a war, heaven is preparing for a wedding and that's where we're going. Okay. Soon and very soon. So if your church, um, is seeker sensitive, you know, it's very important that in these final moments that we are seeking the Lord for Bible prophecy and understanding eschatology, which only means end time events, which is unfolding before our eyes. Because God doesn't want us to be confused. Confusion is not of God. Confusion is of the, of the enemy. God is very, very clear and is very simple. The gospel is very simple. Um, religion complicates it. People complicate it. This here flesh complicates things. Keep it simple. Um, you know, the feel good frozen chosen that that's uh, replacement theology churches are, are being very silent right now. You know, just remember if God breaks his covenant to Israel, he could break his covenant to us. And he's not a God that he's not a man that he should lie. God is faithful. And we can trust in that faithfulness. Um, peace is coming to Israel, all right. It, it will be coming to Israel, but it will be a false peace because it'll be the Antichrist agreement. Um, you know, in the Daniel 9, 27, that covenant with many will begin the tribulation period. We won't be here again. We are actually in the shadow of the tribulation right now, which is wild. We are in the shadow of Ezekiel 38, 39 war. And it's crazy. It's kind of like the Lord gave me like a little picture in my mind of a house on fire. You know, we could feel the heat. We could see the fire, but we're outside that picket fence where that fire is burning. And it's, we can feel the heat more and more, but we're not affected by it because we're in a different dispensation. And this, by the way, is the only, only period of time where Israel and the church have lived in the same, you know, um, same period of time in history, which is wild since May 14th, 1948, when Israel became a nation in one day. The Bible says, can anything, can anyone become a nation in one day? Yes, Israel did. That was the fulfillment of Bible prophecy. May 14, 1948. So since then, um, and remember, although we are in the shadow of the tribulation and we feel that heat and we, we can see the fire and we can see the flames and we can see the flames escalating, we are in the shadow of the Almighty. We live and breathe in the shadow of the Almighty. Nothing touches us. We are in the palm of his hand, okay? We are hedged in by angels. If we could see, beloved, the spiritual realm right now, we would drop over dead, most literally. Um, I'm certain. I'm certain. But God has surrounded us by his angels. Read Psalm 91. We are in the shadow. We live in the shadow of the Almighty. Okay? He covers us with his, his wings. We are sheltered. Okay, do not be fearful of what's going on right now. Do not live in a state of fear. Be anxious for nothing, the Bible tells us. Um, fear has torment, the Bible tells us. But perfect love casts out fear. Okay, so the next event on God's prophetic time clock is the rapture. We'll be gone, folks. We're leaving. This is the first time in history that Israel and the church has existed at the same time. Um, when Israel became a nation in one day. And that, I believe, started the labor, the beginning of the end of this dispensation called grace. Now we're wide awake. Labor pains have intensified as prophesied in the Bible. We're at the end of labor. The ring of fire is only a very short period of time. If you listen to my video yesterday, at the end of labor, it's called the ring of fire, prior to the birth. It's a searing pain 
where they tell the woman, stop pushing, okay? As it is in the natural, so it is in the spiritual. Stop pushing. Let go and let God, as only God can deliver us and bring us into his glorious light at the rapture of the church. I can't wait. That trumpet is about to sound, guys. God is in full control. We have to 100% believe that because we walk by faith and not by sight. So the world could be crashing down all around us as it is. Our house could be falling down. Whatever, we walk by faith, not by sight. Now, we're affected emotionally by what's going on, but we trust in our God, our Creator, that He is who He says He is, and He will do what He says He's going to do in the Bible, and we're about to be raptured. Okay, so we're in the days of Noah, like I said, um, So, it, and it says, as in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the, the coming of the Son of Man. And what was happening in the, in the days of Noah? Uh, just read about it. We're in that day. We're gene editing and is in the news and wars and rumors of wars. Yeah, Israel is surrounded by a ring of fire. Israel is surrounded by a ring of fire. And that's unfriendly fire. Man's heart is wicked beyond imagination, but not regeneration. Jesus Christ is the truth, the life, and the way. The only way to the Father is through the Son, not Allah, Buddha, Mary, whoever, fill in the blank. As I said, are you born again? There's no greater gift. Eternal life with the one who loves us eternally and unconditionally. Don't be deceived. There is a devil. He is not equal to God by any means. He is created by God. And whatever he means for evil, God turns it into good. And I can testify to that with my own life story. Romans 8, 28, my very favorite scripture. Um, so whatever the enemy means for harm, God turns into good. So don't be fearful of sharing your testimony. Don't be fearful of, of writing down on those pages things that have happened to you, whether it be sexual abuse, physical abuse, domestic abuse, whatever it is. The Holy Spirit wants to be intimate in fellowship with us. And sometimes we keep things in that God wants to get out of us. He wants to purge out of us. So is the beauty of journaling. Journaling is such a beautiful process. And God gives me songs. God gives me poems. All these poems come from journaling. I'll be journaling and out comes this stuff, you know. And it's, it's just so that we know how very much he loves us. He doesn't want us to walk around with bitterness. He doesn't want us to walk around with hurt and, um, you know, the pains of those fiery darts that have been shot at us in childhood or shot at us in, you know, middle age or as parents. And he does not want us to walk around feeling unworthy because what he did on that cross, guys, it is finished. We need to rejoice in the fact that it is finished. We don't work for our salvation. That's a glorious thing. Praise God. The Holy Spirit at the moment of salvation moves in and occupies and dwells within us. We can't change our behaviors. Only God can change our behaviors and prompt us to walk in the right direction. The Bible says that the heart is wicked above all things. Who can know it but God? We don't know our own heart. You know, people say, you see these things, uh, trust your heart, trust your heart, you know, be guided by your heart. No, don't be guided by your heart. The heart is wicked above all things. Who can know it but God? Um, we're not guided by our heart, guys. We're guided by the power of the Holy Spirit. And he is very, very efficient and effective at guiding us in the right path. God is about to step in and it will be too late when that trumpet sounds you'll be left behind to face the worst time in history you can come to christ in the, during the tribulation but your life will be required of you um, it definitely won't be a seeker friendly world it will be a very controlled and evil narrative it is written if you haven't asked jesus christ to save you you need to do it now i would not wait another nanosecond and if you are saved 
get excited. Hello, Jesus is coming back for his bride. And we're going to the wedding. The Bible says, I go to prepare a place for you, that where I am, you may be also. And that eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for those that love him. That's us. That's us, guys. So I'm going to share a little bit from... Behold, I stand at the door and knock. So anyway... Um, when I was a prodigal for all those years, you know, I got into deep addiction. I got into um, a thousand dollar a day cocaine addiction, opiate addiction, and the lifestyle that accompanies it. And was a Christian, got saved at the age of 11, but for lack of knowledge, walked around um, always feeling like something was amiss. You know, I always felt like I was on the outside looking in you know, compliments of the Holy Spirit. Like if I was in a bar or club, whatever, um, you know, it felt like I was on the outside looking in. And I felt like, you know, I shouldn't be here. It was a bizarre feeling, but it was the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit indwells us. He continues to continue always. He does not, you don't ever forfeit your salvation. That is a gift, a gift. God does not take away a gift. Now, at the Bema seat, there are rewards, okay? The Bible says that the Bema seat, that's the Bema seat of Christ. There are rewards for our works, works for what we've done for the Lord here on earth. But that has nothing to do with our salvation, guys. Nothing, not a thing. Don't ever confuse your salvation and your walk with the Lord, okay? Your salvation is a birthday, you are immediately and eternally saved. From then on, that becomes a walk, all right? And a lot of us fall. Not all who wander are lost. Um, and God is calling his prodigals to come home. Not come home to a mean, distant father. That Because a lot of us that haven't had fathers, my dad was killed when I was 18 months old, so I did not have a loving father representation to reference. And a lot of people don't have loving fathers to reference, okay, to say the very least. So we don't have a reference point for God, a lot of us. And we get lost out there, don't we? We get lost and we get caught up in the wrong crowd and, you know, think we're going in this other direction. And our whole identity gets redefined by the enemy. That's what happened to me. My whole identity. I mean, I was a cocaine cowboy's wife. I mean, he was deported back to Colombia, but that was my identity. And as much as I had physically, you know, diamonds, emeralds, whatever I wanted at my disposal, I hated myself. And I felt such a bitterness inside of myself. And I knew, I knew in my heart that I didn't want any of this. I had everything I wanted, everything I needed was not there. Okay, everything I wanted, I had at my disposal. Everything I needed was not there. Okay, it was not provided. But the enemy gave me everything that my little heart thought it desired. Remember, the heart is wicked above all things. Who can know it but God? All right, so when I was back in that prodigal lifestyle, um, right before I came to the Lord, I used to have this sleep paralysis. And it was like, well, I'll just read it to you. And this is my coming back to the Lord. Um, lastly, speaking of dreams, I recall a repetitive dream that began around, oddly, oddly at the time I was became born again, around the age of 11. It was as if when I was asleep, I'd, I would awaken to see my body just lying there, sleeping. In my dreams, I would frantically try to wake myself up, but my mouth was unable to speak. My body was incapable of moving as though it were paralyzed, although I could perfectly see my surroundings. I could see the people who were in the same room with me, but I was unable to communicate with them. I tried to scream, but no volume would come out. I hated that dream because I felt so powerless over it. Always, I was grateful to finally wake up. My heart would race wild and fast and I, as I recounted the details in the dream. It so petrified me into my adult life that I even asked a neurologist, a neurologist if I might be having seizures uh, in my sleep. 
In nursing school, and I, I inquired of every knowledgeable source as to the root of these night terrors, but my questions remained unanswered. The Word of God states in Isaiah, the 45th chapter, that the Lord will give us hidden riches and great treasures in darkness. The Holy Spirit has certainly made known many mysteries in my life's journey and will continue to illuminate those truths as I need them pertaining to the kingdom of God. As I have neared the completion of this book, the Lord has faithfully given me the interpretation of those long forgotten dreams, which were really nightmares that troubled me. As always, he has made all things beautiful in his own appointed time. The dream or nightmare makes perfect sense now. Although my spirit was indeed born again, the early trauma in my life allowed my soul to remain sleepy, numb, and disengaged. But my spirit stood watch, patiently waiting for my soul to awaken to the engagement, desperately calling out for me to reclaim, to claim the birthright that was mine. He who has an ear to hear, let him hear. As you have repetitively gazed back at the horror of your sleeping body, unable to awaken yourself, I too am grieved because of my body's inability to awaken from its slumber, saith the Lord. I continue to knock upon the door, mourning as my bride needlessly struggles, a prisoner in a false system of human philosophies, tr traditions, and doctrine, denying my great power, neglecting to see the full revelation of who I am. My people perish for lack of knowledge, knowledge of the Holy One, therefore remain helpless prisoners in a spiritual war long ago ended. Awaken them now, my child, show them who I am. Arise, my love, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Awaken, my bride, look now into my face. Arise, my love, let us go from this place. You are not without power, you have been sleeping, not dead. I resurrect you now by my great power for I am the head. I am the head of my body. My mind functions as I will. I command my body to move, stand, or be still. Satan has no power over you. You've been listening to his lies. I am the head of my body, and I command you now to arise. I cannot use you when you're sleeping. Wake up, it's time to go. You've been sleeping so very long now. Don't wait for that trumpet to blow. Wake up, my bride, my chosen ones. Wake up without delay. Blessed is he who stays awake, for very soon is our wedding day. Colossians 2.10, and you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. From the foundations of this earth, you have obtained eternal favor. My hand of grace is upon you, child. I have always been your redeemer and savior. savior. My kingdom is only discovered when you seek me with all of your heart. Truly few have found it. Countless numbers have chosen to depart. The road is very narrow and most just turn around, comfortable and content with a portion of life they think, they only think that they have found. Others have climbed so very high, but oh, the fall was steep, neglecting to keep their eyes on me, forgetting my guidance to seek. Some are still sitting down to rest on a path that has long been dead, still unaware that I'm gone, climbing a different path up ahead. But for those who have chosen to follow me, never letting me out of their sight, the rewards, my child, are eternal and far outweigh the scars of the fight. My hand of blessing has been upon you, child, from the dawn of the ages. If only you could see the beauty I've transcribed upon tomorrow's pages. Indeed, you've climbed your mountain, but look down now at the lost valley below. Your healing is complete. It's time to see how you've grown. Fly high, my love, fly gracefully, never forgetting to let me lead. For he who the sun sets free is truly free indeed. John eight thirty six. If the sun therefore shall, therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. And 1 Corinthians one twenty seven. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise or to confound the wise and God has chosen the weak things of this world to put to shame the things which are mighty so I'm just going to end with this salvation invitation because today could be your last day on earth not because the rapture happened but because you walked out the door today and today you took your last breath for whatever reason None of us know what that space in the middle of our birth date 
and our death date. That's our life, that little dash in the middle. But none of us know that last number. I believe that we will be raptured in this generation, but I could walk out my door today. And the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be immediately present with the Lord. And then I would get my glorified body as those who are the dead in Christ are going to get their glorified body as soon as that trumpet sounds. But there will be many who walk out the door today and didn't know that this was their last breath, that their last day on earth. And this was the number after the dash. So if you're not saved, an invitation is exactly that, an invitation. Some invitations we toss to the side due to other plans or simply because of a lack of interest. Trust me, friend, this is one invitation that you do not want to miss. If you don't RSVP to this invitation on earth, you can't simply show up at the door and expect to be welcome because Jesus Christ is the door. You will, in fact, be denied entrance through the gate because Jesus Christ is the gate. Your denial of his love is something that you'll eternally, eternally regret. Everybody will live eternally, friend. Whether you've chosen to believe it or not doesn't change the facts. The plan of eternal life wasn't left up to our discretion, but choosing where we'll spend it certainly is our choice. God is not obligated to consult with human beings on these issues, and neither is he required to perform according to the dictates of our reasoning. The heart of sinful man continues to accuse a holy God of the most grandiose of crimes, yet he still bids us to come just as we are. Why live with eternal regret and sorrow? There simply won't be any exceptions made when we stand before God Almighty because the exception was already made. It was finished at Calvary. God gave up his perfect son, promising all who believe in him entrance into his eternal kingdom, the only ticket into his holiness. That ticket was already broken and torn for us, that each one of us may redeem its full value and be presented spotless before our maker. Jesus Christ purchased our ticket, but we must consciously and humbly offer it back to him, to God, understanding the eternal cost of his great exchange. Today, if you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. If you haven't opened up your heart to this incredible God who loves you, I encourage you to do so while the opportunity is still present. Jesus stated in John 3, 3, that we must be born again to enter into the kingdom of heaven. That simply means that the Holy Spirit of God lights our unlit candle, our spirit, the moment, providing us with a supernatural understanding of who he is with a personal revelation of his word. An unlit candle or a natural man, a natural man doesn't understand or comprehend spiritual truths. So he ignores them and denies them and mocks them an eternal mistake that will cost him his very life. But Acts 2.21, it shall come to pass that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved, not might be saved. So you just say something like, Lord Jesus, forgive me for the many times that I've turned away from you or even mocked you because of my lack of knowledge and gross misrepresentation of your character. I thank you for cleansing me from all my sin. I believe that God purposely allowed you to die in my place to mediate justice for me because I believe you are this world's only savior, that your death, burial, and resurrection on the third day is true, that you died in my place. I understand that no other sacrifice was or will ever be acceptable in exchange for my sin apart from your perfect sacrifice. Lord Jesus, by faith, I walk across that bridge right now and I look forward to spending eternity worshiping this mighty God and King that I now personally know. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for carrying me across the threshold of God's amazing grace, instantly delivering me out of the kingdom of darkness and into the marvelous light of your kingdom. Today, tomorrow, and forever, I am yours, Lord. And to his prodigals. This is a letter from a prodigal. I know that you don't know me, and I probably don't know you, but God said that we are his own dear children, equally chosen and born anew. For my survival, I must depend upon you, and likewise, you upon me. Please allow me to introduce myself, for I am well hidden from your eyes to see. 
I am God's beloved prodigal, but I still think I may be lost. I accepted our Lord and Jesus, Lord and Savior without true knowledge of the cost. Please come and find me, although I assure you I know the way. Please don't listen to my manufactured confidence. Don't believe a single word I say. Please hunt me down as if I were your own. I know that you don't know me, but I'll die out here on my own. Please take my hand and comfort me and tell me it's okay. After all, I am a prodigal and prodigals go astray. And do me a favor when I finally agreed to hear you out. Please don't let, don't speak into my soul hypocrisy and doubt. You see, I've already accepted my savior. I'm going to heaven just like you, but my shame won't allow me to face the hypocrites occupying your church pews. Yes, I am God's beloved prodigal, regardless of what you believe. But I've yet to discover the critical knowledge that my wayward soul has failed to receive. I promise that when someone finds me and I finally learn the facts, nothing will be impossible and nothing will I lack. Please come and rescue me. I'm out here all alone. If someone doesn't make it soon, we'll meet then in our heavenly home. Yes, I am God's beloved prodigal. I will not go away. I am part of your own body forever here to stay. Luke 15, 20, and he arose and came to his father. But when he was a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran, fell on his neck and kissed him. So if you are a prodigal, know that God is waiting with his arms stretched open wide to greet you, to embrace you, to deliver you and heal you from the trauma that you suffered at the hands of the enemy. Okay, and if you're not born again, do not wait. Do not wait, friend. This is like the final curtain call. And that trumpet is about to sound. And we aren't on these channels, you know, these different channels. So many different YouTube channels have popped up just for nothing. Just to, just to share Jesus and just to share, I said I would never do this. I said I would never stand on a stage and, and share um you know, my testimony, I share my testimony everywhere I go. Everyone who knows me knows I'm a Christian, but I've told the Lord, uh, I don't know how to this fear of public speaking. I know fear is, um, but you know, God got the last laugh here because this is not really standing on a stage. But God's heart for the prodigal is broken because we have allowed the enemy to form our identity when our identity was already formed in Christ. I've linked the ABCs of Salvation in the description box along with who we are in Christ. Um, know that we're going soon, guys. I don't know if it's today. I don't know if it's tomorrow. I don't know the day and the hour, the second, the nanosecond, but I know it's soon. In the twinkling of an eye, Jesus said, lift your heads Lift up your heads and look up, for your redemption draws nigh. Don't let anyone, and I mean anyone, whether it be a family member, whether it be somebody at work, don't let anyone take the joy of your blessed hope away. Okay, don't let anyone take your peace. Jesus said, my peace I leave you, my peace I give you, not as this world gives. We have a supernatural peace and a supernatural joy that the world can't give us and could never give us. Don't allow that to be compromised in these final moments. I love you guys. Know that I'm praying for you and yours. Until next time, keep looking up. Our redemption draws nigh. God bless you guys.